We are here with uh, Gary Middleditch. Uh, he is the uh, head of trading at uh, Socar Trading here in uh, the UK. And uh, we are uh, having a, a nice conversation uh, over uh, the trading challenge, the energy trading challenge that uh, we have just experienced the end of the first day here at ESCP Europe Business School at the London campus. Uh, so Gary, uh, you have been uh, a supporter of our uh, initiatives and our activities here at the school because you, it's the second time that you are coming, uh, the second year. Uh, we have uh, had a, a nice growth of, of, of the uh, energy trading challenge going from about 20 teams to now 41 teams, 17 uh, different universities being represented here. So how did you find your experience here by talking and engaging with uh, the students and the participants in this uh, trading challenge? Yeah, I think it's very interesting. The, uh, first of all, you're bringing uh, uh, smart uh, energy basically to come and do the, uh, the, the challenge. That's a uh, a team that have been in the market for several years um, and have trained some of the best traders in the market. Um, so I think, you know, that's a, uh, that's a, I have, I have people that have gone through that uh, particular challenge within BP and, you know, now work for us in, in uh, SoCar in London. So, you know, for, uh, for people to have that opportunity to come and, and, and be, to experience that is, I think, um, uh, it's an, it's a, an excellent experience, an excellent opportunity, I guess is the word. Um, the, it's always interesting because, uh, you know, I spend my whole day trading um, uh, crude and trying to work out what's going on in the energy markets and, and, and uh, all markets globally, really, as a, as a result. Um, but it's very refreshing to come here and see uh, a group of young people who are engaged and interested and want to find out uh, more the questions that I generally get asked are, uh, are very um, intelligent questions. No, <laughs> that's surprise, not not really surprising given the client the, the clientele of the, the course, but um, uh, but I think it stimulates a very good discussion around the uh, around around the uh, the room. Um, so yeah, for me it's a very interesting experience as well. Yeah. It's a greater environment in London, I guess, uh, during this uh, time period because we are. Uh, almost at the end of uh, the famous IP week uh, here in London. And that's one of the drivers why we uh, have decided with our partners, as you mentioned earlier, Smart Global Trading, to launch uh, this event here in uh, London at the London campus. Um, there is a lot of excitement, a lot of activity, a lot of uh, business uh, matching and making, I guess, uh, in London. Uh, how, how, how do you uh, see the the markets uh, actually going forward in the short term. I mean, through the discussions and perhaps all the uh, interactions and the analysis that you had uh, already so far, uh, we are at the beginning of 2018. Uh, how do you see the markets going forward? So I think the market. Well, uh, yeah, it's been a very busy week. There's always lots of uh, uh, meetings and lunches, and actually, it's, uh, you know, it continues. I'm out again tonight, later on tonight. So it's going to, you know, it's uh, I'm uh, I still not quite through it. Um, uh, look, the, the oil market is incredibly interesting every year. Uh, things are always changing. Things are, the, the market is, uh, there's, there's, there's consist, consistent requirement for change in the energy market to balance the price and balance the, the supply demand of the world. So, you know, it's a fascinating market to be, be, invo be involved in. Uh, you know, weeks like this, we get various different opinions from, from all sorts of from traders to trader, from analysts to traders, from banks to traders about you know how the market is going to evolve in the next few years, um, and you know uh, we all keep our uh, own kind of some of those opinions kind of guarded because we want to make us some money out of it before we tell everyone what we think is going to happen. So maybe I won't explain to you now exactly what I think is going to happen, but but uh, the market. Um, the market is continuing. The, the interesting thing, the market is continuously evolving. In the oil market, you like it, it's interesting. We've got young young people coming to this course, but uh, even old people like me, we spend our time continuously learning and continuously trying to get to uh, uh, develop uh, new techniques to understand the oil market and the new what's going to happen next in the oil market. Okay, so. <coughs> um what would you, if you would uh, single out, let's say, one or two major events that you would be expecting to, to see in 2018 and concerning the oil markets, of course, which is your expertise, uh, what would those be? I mean, uh, could anything that we have been discussing uh, as well uh, earlier in the roundtable discussion in terms of geopolitics, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, supply or demand shocks potentially, what would you uh, expect to see? 
Okay, so um, I mean, currently we expect the market. Um, well, currently there, there, as always, there's multiple things going to influence the price, but there are certain aspects in the near term. There's a Venezuelan election, which is a, a major thing for us to watch to see what the outcome of that election is and what the response from that is to, from the U.S. and how that might um, how that might influ influence price. Uh, then we have the constant, constant uh, fluctuation between the uh, increase in capacity supply from the U.S. versus the increase in uh, the increase in demand and the normal fluctuation of within the market between the refinery maintenance programs that go on that, that reduce demand for crude oil versus the uh, supply that comes into the market over the year. So the, there's a, a multitude of things that are affecting the price. My expectation is is that the prices will rise quite firmly over the over the latter part of this year in the current environment with the current information. But uh, I've known for a long time it's it's not something you you. you you need to make money out of the market, whether it goes up or down, and uh, you know we have to we have to see what the what the market is going to give us, and then we make money out of that. So you know, that's, that's uh, <coughs> there has been a lot of discussion about uh, market disruptors, uh, technology disruptors uh, in particular, uh, for example, electric vehicles that uh, they might be uh, significantly disrupting the oil uh, industry, subsequently because of the products, obviously that uh, they are being consumed. Uh, we have seen a recent trend with you know diesel being uh, cut out from uh, you know m most of the car manufacturers deciding not to produce diesel anymore uh, or diesel cars anymore uh, would you expect that uh, as some say that the oil business or the oil trading business might be dead anytime soon or is that a very uh, you know uh, strong statement i guess i think it's a very strong statement because i don't expect it at all i think the uh, you have to whilst we are going to have uh, a massive rev revolution in transport. Um, that revolution is required to balance the market. I mean, so we require technology now to help to distribute energy and resource generally uh, globally around the world to cope with the demographical increases that we have. And we need to, uh, and so this is, this is part of that. So, and you have to, you, whilst you look at uh, demand growth as a result, or current expectations that demand growth may start to peak in 2030, maybe 2040, let's say it's 2030, um, you know, that still means significant requirement for extra energy between now and then, even to get to that point where it stops growing in terms of demand. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and we have to do that in a, in a situation where conventional is, is, in, is, is actually in decline. So. Um, you know, that the decline rates of conventional fields, I mean, in the North Sea have basically been above 7% in some, in, uh, and so there's a, there's, there's a requirement to find an awful lot of oil on an annual basis to actually just, just balance the market. And, you know, what price we end up at will be a function of a multitude of different things, and you'd know, be foolish to try and sort of predict that at this point in time now. I don't think, even think that, you know, BP with their long-term forecast will produce sort of several different scenarios for, for what happens. But, um, but I, I would be very surprised if oil doesn't have a place in some instance, just because it, it it's, has unique characteristics in being so, uh, in so fungible and so transportable. So would you still recommend the oil industry as one of the attractive and uh, you know, interesting sectors for them to engage to, for the young students that you have seen earlier today? I think, uh, I think the oil market is, in, is well, the energy market, let's say, is is fundamental to everything we do. So there is absolutely, uh, you know, where, and, and how it, and the oil market will always change, or the energy market will always change to to get the point it needs to be. So, so you know, if if, if in if in uh, you know ten fifteen years the market is no longer basically. Uh, uh, centered around uh, refining crude oil and putting in and creating products, it will have found either something else to do with the crude oil or it will have found some other energy that it finds is more efficient to distribute to the market and it will be doing that as well. So energy companies will evolve through that process and I think that for the energy market, it's a fundamental part of any economy, well, of the economy full stop, uh, along with every other commodity market that basically supplies input to economies. Excellent, Gary, thank you very much. Thank you, no problem.